certainly think, uh, you know, you're going to find a very difficult minister to get the IFA or indeed any of the other farming organisations to attend any more summits because they're attending summits with the minister but they're not getting any type of an increase uh, in payments uh, to enable them to have a decent standard of living uh, for their families. So we don't want any more summits. We want action from the Minister, and the government needs to endorse the, the Dowling report, establish an independent beef regulator, and open up Northern Ireland uh, to live cattle exports. Minister Coveney's efforts to sidestep the issue while he waits on promotion to the Cabinet I think is an insult to farmers, and I was surprised that Minister Coveney, who have always uh, respected uh, uh, his uh, sincerity, that he would be actually saying to farmers that I may not be in this position next week or I may not be in this position next month. Uh, obviously, he's in line to move to a different cabinet uh, portfolio, but in the meantime, I don't think he should abandon the farmers. He should make sure uh, that while he's there, that he would make every effort to ensure that the farmers will, in, will uh, get an, an adequate payment for the product that they produce. The retailers and the supermarkets for far too long have been ripping off uh, the, the farming community in this country. It's not, and I don't blame this government all of the way for that either. I think different ministers have failed to act in this particular area. We've had many, many promises where we're going to have action against the, the supermarket owners who every year seem to drive down the product, the prices that are paid to farmers. We have a situation at the moment with a number of supermarkets, particularly in, 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 the, in the carrot industry and, and, and other potato industry and other areas like that as well, where they're selling the product way below the cost of producing it. How is that happening? They're, they're taking on board uh, what the, the pr producer is producing, they're forcing down the prices and they're playing havoc uh, with the livelihoods of the, of the farming community. I think it's important, Minister, and Minister Hayes is here tonight, who will be well aware of the situation coming from Tipperary, uh, where we also have a, a huge number of beef farmers and indeed the whole southeast area, that the Minister uh, Hayes would be well aware of the situation. And I would hope that he would take a direct interest in doing something uh, in a sincere way that will make sure that the farming community will have a decent and an adequate uh, standard of living. We've had the, the Dowling report, and you know this is another report that seems to be a good report. Uh, it, it arose from first roundtable discussion in April. I think it emphasised uh, emphasised a number of areas that needed to be addressed, improved transparently transparency and timely com communication and price and market specification, particularly between suppliers and processors, and that's not happening. A formalised mechanism for ensuring that research, breeding and education remains consistent with evolving market realities. Potential for producer organisations recognised under the EU's common market organisation rules to play a role in building scale for farmers in the supply chain and building more professional re uh, relationships with the processing sector. There seems to be a whole situation of them and us. The farmer on one hand, who is not getting adequate price, the, the beef factories who are uh, in the middle, and then you have the, the supermarkets and the retailers who are creaming off uh, massive profit, profits. And I think there needs to be a whole coming together of these partic three particular areas. The possibility for a more formalised contract arrangements between factories and their suppliers. And we have a, a situation in my own county where factories are no longer taking a load of cattle from a farmer. I remember back uh, a few years ago, if you had 25 or 30 cattle, you put them into a lorry and the factory took to 25 or 30. Now they're taking five, they're taking six, they're taking seven. We can't take them this week, we'll take them next week. We can't take them today, we'll take them tomorrow. We will only take three and four at a time. And I think, Minister, it's important for you to find out why that is happening. Obviously, it's to the benefit of the factory and it's to the benefit of the retailer and it's certainly not to the benefit of the farmer. So it's important, uh, Minister, that you would find out why this situation has changed from taking a full load a couple of years ago to now to piecemeal loads. One minute, we believe that the government must establish a fully independent, as I said, beef regulator to oversee the long-term sustainability of the industry 
The, legger, the, leg, the regulator would ensure transparency in the industry. The concentration of a small number of processors exposes the industry to the threat of cartels, as Deputy Kirk has said, which a regulator will help ensure against. It would also help to promote communication and medium to long-term planning between the various facets of the industry, rather than the current chronic term, termism that is destroying the beef industry. Minister Hayes, I'm sure that you will take back the message to the Minister that the situation is dire at the present time. When I hear very good beef producers in Wexford talking about going out of business, talking about not having a decent standard of living uh, for their family, and talking about actually going to claim social welfare payments, I think it's time then for us all to wake up and take the situation that is, that is there at the present time, do something about it, and make sure that the beef industry will survive into the future. Come on. Yeah, the, now call on the Minister of State. Uh, Deputy Tom Hayes, uh, steering with Deputies Andrew Doyle, John O'Mahony, Bernard Durkin, Potty Coffee, Heather Humphries, Tony Dollar, Pat Deary. The Minister has uh, nine minutes and should move amendment number one. Right. Thank you, Lascan Cola. Mm -hmm. I may move the Government amendment to the motion the beef sector amendment number one, if that's right. Yes. Developing the beef sector for the betterment of 100,000 Irish livestock farmers has been a clear priority of this government since taking office back in 2011. I'm the first to acknowledge, as Minister Simon Coveney has done in the past, that prices are down on this time last year, mainly due to 2013 being an exceptionally high year for beef prices in Ireland. In fact, if one looks at the graph uh, for 2014, they're three euro 79. In 2013, four euro and seven cents. In uh, 2012, they were three euro 86. 2011, when we came to power, there were 346. And indeed, the last full year of the government, uh, the previous government, there were 2 euro 90 cents compared to 3 euro uh, 79 cents today. That said, I wish to reiterate that prices are matters to be determined between purchasers and sellers of cattle. And it is neither, neither appropriate nor indeed possible for me to intervene directly in this issue. And I want to make that perfectly, perfectly clear from the beginning. I want to make it clear that the days of market intervention are clearly gone. My focus is on developing the potential of the beef industry and expanding, and expectations that I can intervene in the price relationship are misplaced by everybody and it's disingenuous to be saying that we can. The relationship between processors and farmers is an in, uh, interdependent one. Farmers and processors at all times fight their own end to uh, have, I suppose, the best price possible for beef. It is important also to acknowledge market evolution in recent years. In 2013, the performance of the beef sector was strong with output of over 518,000 tonnes, which is an increase of 5% over 2012. The, val the value of beef export increased in 2013 by 10% to 2.1 billion. Irish beef prices were 106% of EU average in 2013 and notwithstanding recent fluctuations remain above the EU average. It is important to note that beef prices are under pressure all across Europe and especially in our key markets of the UK which takes almost 50% of our beef exports. And I want to remind the House tonight and tell the House that I stood three weeks ago in Sainsbury's supermarket in the UK. And to see what the, the UK prices were compared to ours. And I was told quite definitely by the management of those supermarkets that we are consistently under pressure in their supermarket. And there is a strong determination by the UK Farmers Union to make sure that they sell 
only B, E, uh, UK beef only. And that's a real problem that we have and it's something that I think we should, as a country, work together to change over, long, over the next few years, if, if at all possible. As deputies will be aware, Food Harvest 2020 outlines a strategy for development of Ireland's agri-food industry, including the beef sector. My clear focus has been and will r remain on delivering the actions necessary to allow the beef sector to allow the targets it set for itself in Food Harvest 2020. It is important to point to, uh, uh, it is important at this point to acknowledge the significance existing government support for the beef sector to contribute towards its, its development, which includes during the Irish presidency of the EU, the government negotiated a common agricultural policy worth 12.5 million to the Irish agri-food sector, which was indeed considerable investment within the sector and something that was acknowledged by almost everybody in this country, including uh, the farming organisations and anybody as, uh, associated with agriculture and anybody that saw at first hand the performance of the Minister for Agriculture in relation to those talks and pulling them together. The new beef data and genomics programme in the Rural Development Plan is worked up to 52 million per year for farmers. Anybody that saw it last week at Grange, the determination of farmers to change the industry uh, was clearly seen by the amount of people that attended that, which I attended, and saw it firsthand, uh, their determination. In 2014, there is 40 million of nat national exchequer funds for the beef sector through a range of schemes. And I am pleased to say that 10 million is being started payment today on the farmers uh, under the uh, data programme which was announced last year. Deputies will be aware that in response to re recent issues, Minister Coveney invited key stakeholders, including farm organisations, beef processors and relevant state agencies to roundtable discussions on the future development of the beef, beef sector. This initiative was intended to provide a useful forum for all the main players in the inter industry to engage positively and present constructive ideas on positioning the sector to address current challenges. The discussion at the, round, at the second roundtable included presentations from ICBF, Borbia and Chagas, with the main focus on the presentation by Mr Michael Dowling, who had updated his work on the implementation of the Beef Activation Programme. And I want to tell the House tonight, under no circumstances did he, at any stage, recommend a regulator for the industry. Two what his report two minutes, is, uh, omit, uh, two minutes remaining. What his report stated that improved transparency and timely communications of prices and market specifications between suppliers and, and uh, processors. The possibility for, for more formalised contract arrangement be fa between factories and their suppliers. On transparency, my department has made a number of improvements to his website in order to facilitate farmers. Arising from the roundtable discussions, I announced an additional allocation of a half a million, which brings a total to nine million to the present day, with the amount of money that Board Bia is spending uh, on markets worldwide. I would urge stakeholders to reflect carefully on the proceedings of the first two meetings of the Beef Forum and of the Dowling Report, and to take time to encourage each other on its recommendation in order to find mutually satisfactory solutions to the current crisis. I acknowledge, as everybody else does, that there is a difficulty that we have to face. We need to cooperate. The reality is that there's a, a misconception out there, there is no live exports happening. My department attached considerable importance to the live export trade. Total live exports to date this year are over 150,000 head, of, 50, of which 25,000 went to the UK, an increase of 3,100 head. 
These are the facts that are happening. There is live exports, and we will not, as a government or as a department, stand in the way of live exports. In fact, we will encourage them wherever possible that we can do it. In it we can do. In relation to Minister Michelle O'Neill, we are in ongoing dialogue. With, with Northern Ireland, Michelle O'Neill. In the last week, in the last three weeks, I have met her twice. Simon, uh, Minister Simon Coveney has met her on several occasions. There is no, no issue about meeting her. We'll meet her tomorrow morning if it can help any issue. The reality is that the issues there are difficult to deal with. But can I say, what, and finally, I just want to say this finally, what we need is a proactive working relationship with everybody to try and increase the profits for the farmers. I acknowledge, as a beef farmer myself, the difficulties that are there. Yes, there is, is difficulty, but we will not uh, get, get results when we condemn the Minister for Agriculture, who goes to the United States of America, who is currently walking around the supermarkets of America uh, uh, in the US to deal with the issues. Thank you, Minister. And, and also, last week, the, the um, the Chinese person was here to, to help us, and just in relation that we need to cooper we need cooperation, we need support, not con condemnation of the well, industry. Well, I need to call your too long. Make progress, now. Deputy Andrew Doyle. It's three minutes. How many? Three. 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 Um, thanks, uh, Last Count Carla, and thank uh, Deputy O'Quiv for bringing the motion. I'd just like to make the point that the Committee of Ag for Agriculture, Food and Marine, the Joint Committee, uh, raised this issue, and it was my colleague, actually, in, actual, in fact, Deputy Deering here beside me, who raised this issue first and asked that we, we do um, some work on it. And with that in mind, we set about ha having hearings from all the stakeholders, farm organisations, other organis the meat industry, ICOS, Board B and Chagas. Uh, while the issue at the start was about um, bull beef and the change in the spec, spec um, for, for the animals, which was definitely contentious, it was quite clear that unless everybody sat down together, um, all the stakeholders in it, we weren't going to have a beef industry because nobody could could um, project what sort of a future it held. I am a, a suckler farmer myself, still active, so I understand exactly what's going on here. I don't buy, uh, normally sell um, finished animals, but um, it, this has a ripple effect down upon us all. When we have a depressed price, it feeds back down through the system. I'm just amused at one stage, I've heard p deputies from the other side uh, condemning the forum <clears throat> as a talking shop and yet part of the uh, um, motion calls on the government to implement in full the, the recommendations of the Dowling report. Now that seems contradictory. If you're not going to get people together to actually talk and try and, and have an a, a, a forum where people can trash out the issues, it, chaired as this will be four times a year by the minister. I think it's vitally important that people sit down and understand each other. Three, four, five years ago, we had this very same crisis in dairy, in milk prices, when they hit 20 cents a litre. And it was unsustainable in the long term for farmers to continue to produce milk at that price. It is now and it was then. And I think we have to look at what it is as a sustainable cost base to produce, uh, on which the beef industry will be built. And there is a variable in there compared to milk, where people buy animals in the open market at different stages in their progression before they become beef animals, before they become ready for slaughter. So I think we have to look at that. And we have to, the, the, the meat industry a few years ago told us that they could actually process uh, 40,000 cattle a week. They don't seem to be able to do it because the markets are depressed. So we have to look at the big picture here. And I think an integral part of that is live exports. And live exports have gone up. But there is more to be done. And some people would say that's sacrilegious to be selling out some, sometimes our best, sometimes our poorest animals on the hoof out of this country. Without it, the industry does not survive. It doesn't have alternatives. We have to look at that. Um, I would um, hope that the pro further progress can be made with the North of Ireland. Um, I, think, I think there is an issue there, but it can definitely be sorted out. And as the Minister has said, at North-South Ministerial level, Minister Coveney has met uh, regularly with Michelle O'Neill, his co colleague, and I think anything that can be done, and members of Sinn Féin, if they could also urge the Minister to get proactive with the Irish Government Thank on you, this. David. Just could I say, yeah. I, I, I'm, colleagues used, I'm thinking of your colleagues. Yeah, just <laughs> once, there has been significant investment. Geonomics, the beef data programme are about 
improve be beef discussion groups. I'm involved in them, or my sons are in all of them. They actually do help improve inside farm gate efficiency. What we need to do now is ensure that the forum ensures that people in the industry, all the stakeholders, are working towards the one goal. Because if you don't have a primary product that can be produced for a margin, then you won't have an industry. Thank you, Deputy, Thank you. Deputy John Manny. Please, Deputy, watch the clock. For Thanks, uh, uh, colleagues. Uh, Lask and Corla, and I'm glad to contribute briefly to the motion in the short time that's allocated to me. Look at, it, I suppose, to, to cut to the chase here. There, you know, everyone acknowledges that there is a problem, and it has been outlined in this motion, and it's to a certain extent uh, outlined by by Minister there just uh, a few moments ago in his in his contribution. But uh, you know. <coughs> While everyone admits there's a problem, I don't think it's going to be solved by everyone firing shots at each other and, and accusations at each other between whether it's the, the farmers, the factory owners, or the minister or whatever. I think what needs to be is, a, a, you know, for the roundtable discussions that have taken place already and that they would be uh, progressed or the actions that were proposed there, that they would be progressed um, as time goes on. The one thing I'd say that uh, I, I looked at uh, for the average uh, deadweight prices over the last number of years, obviously there was an exceptionally high price in, in 2013 and, and uh, in other words the graph was upwards I understand from 2011, 2012 and 2013. Uh, Ups, ups uh, significantly from the previous years, where it has gone back now, and that's that's the issue. That's that's uh, discussion here. Um, you know, this quality payment scheme that was the 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 um, agreement between the IFA and the between the IFA and the factory owners, and and that's uh, I, I think you know it is important to acknowledge that there is some issue there, but that that needs to and that needs to be sorted out as quickly as possible. Um, the main problem, is, as I see it, is, you know, as well as it, it, there's a reduction in consumption of beef. I understand the, oh, con, reduc there's a reduction in, in, in Britain of something like um, eight percent, and, and the, some of these large multinational stores uh, is reduced as the demand in their stores is down by uh, up to 18 percent. So, what you have here uh, is, a, is a difficulty or a reduction in consumption that isn't just affecting Ireland, and that's the, that's the problem. And I, I'm glad to note that that there's uh, half a million or 500,000 extra being put in by Board B in, in marketing beef and getting getting people consuming it again. Um, um, there, uh, it, it's also it should be noted that the beef prices in Britain are down. You know, there was a bigger gap last year. Actually, uh, they're down as well. So this isn't something that is exclusive to Ireland. Um, and uh, finally, I just like to—I I know that the minister isn't here tonight because he's actually doing something about it. So uh, in the United States, he, there's also an investment in the in the last budget of 40 million in in, in the beef sector. So there are actions being taken. Uh, this is is an issue that needs to be addressed. But I think it's an issue that can be addressed by everybody working together Thank than you, by firing sharks. So, so Mabeth, Deputy uh, Bernard Duncan. Three no well, uh, In the short time available, can I just say that uh, the fluctuations or peaks and valleys in the, in, in the beef or the meat uh, sector is certainly nothing new to this country. That's always been the case. And I can think many, many years ago, particularly after a period of, of firm prices, uh, there tends to be a valley afterwards that punishes severely the unfortunate people who find themselves exposed in that kind of situation. At the present moment, there's a considerable amount of suspicion uh, amongst between the various uh, uh, stakeholders. Uh, for instance, you have the producers, the process and you have the retailers. And uh, the question arises from time to time as to who controls prices. Apart altogether from supply and demand, who controls prices? And there's a certain amount of suspicion there. And I think that we need to spend some time dealing with that. For example, people will tell me in the beef business that, the, the, uh, that a cartel operates amongst, amongst uh, the, the, the slaughtering facilities. I don't know whether that's true or not. I have no, no evidence to support it. But there's a suspicion there. Uh, similarly, people will tell me, and I'm told everybody else, I'm sure as well, that the, the retailers 
retailers have, have a huge controlling in, influence. And again, uh, there's considerable room for suspicion there. In the United States, the government controls, the government directly controls uh, uh, food prices, particularly beef prices, and they set the price on a weekly basis. So there's, there's, there's a recognition in advance as to what the price will be for those who are producing, for those who are processing, and for those who are retailing. I think, and, 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 and also for the, from, from the consumer's point of view. Can I also say that, that we, we, the peaks and valleys, unfortunately, carry with them a huge risk. And unless and until there's some kind of recognition of, if not a guarantee, at least some kind of regularization of prices and expectations. I think that we're going to continue to have the kind of issue that we're dealing with tonight. And I would, I would recognise and, and, and that the Minister uh, and Minister for State have done and are doing everything possible to try to ensure that the market is, 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 that prevails in, in a healthy state. And can I mention as well, it is important from another point of view, from the point of view of economic recovery, it is hugely important that the, the, the product from the agricultural sector is, is well recognised on the international markets, that a good price is achieved by the producer, and that as a result of that, that producer will be able to continue to produce product for the future. Can I mention as well, the, the first disappointment I think was in relation to, to bull beef, and that's been referred to by other people as well. And I think the sad part about that was that producers, with the expectation that certain things were going to happen, decided to cater for a market that they thought was there, and it wasn't. And it, it disappeared you know, just overnight almost. And I think that that was, was, was hugely disappointing for those who were involved. It was obviously a huge uh, hit to take in terms of financial loss. And as a result, those producers are obviously very sore and very vulnerable as a result of it. And can I, all, all, all I can say is this, that I would certainly like to have the points that are of contentious issues uh, examined uh, in some uh, analytical way with a view to trying to ensure that we address them for the future. Thank you, Deputy. Deputy Potty Coffey. Thank you, Norman. Uh, I wish to speak to the amendment of the, of the motion tonight. And I, too, wish to acknowledge that beef producers in Ireland are suffering from weakened prices in comparison to last year. And this is having a negative effect on farm income and, indeed, the sustainability of the sector. I've met with many farming uh, people and farmers and farming organisations themselves and who have outlined the difficulties that they are currently facing and they are experiencing a difficult time. However, I do want to say at the outset, and I do believe that this private member's motion tonight is really only political opportunism at its worst and an attempt by Fianna Fáil for political gain to undermine the Minister uh, at a time when he is working to improve and enhance the markets that are available for Irish beef at a very critical time for the sector. Are Fianna Fáil seriously saying that there should be direct intervention by the Minister in the markets? to the effect that there should be price fixing. Is that what you're saying? And I would hope that you might clarify that for the benefit of the House and the beef producers of this country, because that's a very dangerous road indeed, I would suggest. I suspect that Fianna Fáil knew full well when taping this motion that the Minister would be in the USA this week, working to ensure that new markets are available for the Irish beef producers. And he should be supported by all in this House in those efforts. I've been engaged over the past year with farming organisations, working to ensure and to increase live market export opportunities from the, the port of Ross Lair. And progress is being made on that in increasing opportunities into the UK markets. And indeed, the Minister and his officials have been very supportive of these efforts. The Fianna Fáil motion calls on the, on the government to ensure there is no barriers to live exports to the UK. So we all agree with that at this side of the House? That is well known and we fully support that. I wonder, will, will all members of the opposition actually support that statement? And I will watch with interest tomorrow evening when the vote occurs to see where the opposition votes lie in, in that respect, in, in respect of live exports. Live exports this year are over up 14% um, in comparison to 2013, and I think we should recognise and welcome that. The beef sector is significant for the Irish economy, and there has been an 8% increase in the value of meat and live exports in 2013, rising by €245 million Euros to €3.3 billion Euros in total. Only last week, Chinese representatives were in this country, again uh, examining the Irish product to ensure and to look at um, exporting that to Chinese markets. 
US inspectors are this week carrying out final inspections in Ireland before giving the green light to beef exports to the US market, to the strong markets in the east coast of America. As we all know, these markets have been closed for over 16 years now since the BSE crisis. And the sooner those markets open, the better for all involved. Beef prices are down this year, we do recognise that, but they are down across all of Europe due to the evidence of weakened consumer demand and competition from other meat products. That's a fact. And the Minister's response, he has allocated an additional half million euros to onboard BIA to enhance new opportunities. So I sincerely think we should all be working towards working to enhance this sector for all of our sakes and for the sake of the Irish economy. Well, Thank you, Lassie. Three, three minutes. That's, um, I welcome the opportunity to contribute to this evening's debate on the beef sector. At the outset, I want to acknowledge the vital role the beef sector plays in the agri-food industry and in turn the huge contribution agriculture makes to the e Irish economy. I want to acknowledge that there is a problem with beef prices at the moment and unfortunately many farmers are going through a very difficult time at present and I have spoken to many of them. The terrible winter last year combined with the poor spring resulted in very high feed costs for farmers and the fall off in beef prices that we are experiencing now means that producers are simply not able to recoup the monies they invested during the difficult period. We need to find a solution and I believe we need what we need now is a collective approach from producers, processors and farm organisations in order to address this matter. At the minute there is a lack of community communication in the beef industry and that's in nobody's interest. We have two main players here, the processors who are looking for security of supply and the producers who are looking for security of return and a reasonable margin. These groups need to come together if a solution is to be found. To this end, the Minister has held a number of roundtable discussions and with key stakeholders, and I welcome the fact that the Minister and his department is now considering legislation for the setting up of a producer organisations for the beef industry. This legislation could allow for groups of, say, 50 to 60 farmers to come together and use their power of supply to negotiate and agree mutually beneficial terms with the processors. We have seen this work very well in the mushroom industry, whereby producer groups can guarantee a continuity of supply to processors and in return there is stability of price for the producer. I believe there could be similar benefits for the beef industry and this would help to provide an equilibrium of supply and help eliminate the peaks and troughs farmers are experiencing in terms of price. Prices come back to the core issue of supply and demand. Beef is like anything else. When there is a shortage of supply, prices are high and when there is oversupply, prices are low. Producer groups in conjunction with the processors could forward plan to try and even out these dips in the market. I reject some of the opposition criticism regarding the government's lack of supply for beef farmers. This government has taken important steps to assist farmers, 40 million packaged to beef farmers in 2014, including 23 million for the beef genomic scheme, 10 million for the beef data program, 5 million for the beef technology adoption program, and 2 million in residual payments on the suckler cow welfare scheme. As the minister has said, the beef data a program will begin to issue in the coming week and this will come as a relief to many farmers who have been anxiously waiting on these monies in order to meet outstanding bills. Mm -hmm. Minister Coveney has far from washed his hands of this issue. Minister Coveney has worked tirelessly as his minister has to expand our export markets and we have seen this has paid dividends with the resumption of live exports to Libya last year. There was a further boost last week when the US Agriculture Secretary stated that he fully expects trade will resume between Ireland and the US before the end of this year. Thank you. Good Progress has also been made in terms of re-entering the Chinese market. Opening these markets will, would be a huge boost and can only be positive for our beef farmers. As I said earlier, the Minister and this Government is committed to the beef sector and we must all work together to resolve the matter. Mark, the Arctic, now Chuck to Tony Lawler. Three I'm, I'm delighted here to be able to speak on this. Uh, first of all, I acknowledge the fact that the beef industry makes such a huge contribution to the whole Irish economy. With almost 100,000 people involved in it, whether they're involved in the uh, sector side or in uh, most cases in my constituency where they're involved in the finishing of cattle uh, for the uh, factories. Uh, the problem that people are talking about here is with regards to the price. There's other issues as well, too, as well, Minister, that has to be acknowledged. And a lot of my constituents are having problems actually in two issues. One, in getting cattle into the 
meat factories themselves for slaughter, and two, the actual confirmation of the size that's required now. A lot of constituents of mine are, are, are finishers who end up producing big, uh, heavy continental type cattle that they actually cannot get into meat factories at the moment and actually they're being penalised for the fact that they're, they're the size of them and the confirmation of them. <coughs> what meat factories are now looking for are O3 type cattle, which is really the dairy, the beef cattle coming off the dairy sector, which is completely wrong. I know myself from the, the sheep sector that any time I produce a lamb in excess of 21 or 22 kilos, and if I produce a lamb of 23, 24 kilos, I actually don't get paid for the, the extra kilos that I produce. And something has to be done with that at the moment, Minister, with regard to making uh, beef producers or the, the, the factories actually pay for the cattle that's been brought into them. Uh, I think we have to look at this uh, another way. I acknowledge what the Minister, both yourself and Minister Coveney, have done. It's very cynical of Fianna Fáil here to be criticising the Minister. I was with him last week on a, on a, on a suckler farm down in Kildare when he had the, the US Secretary of State for Agriculture, uh, Tom Vinslack, down there to try and open up markets. And to my mind, the whole key part of all this is getting approved markets out there. We have a quality product. We have grass-fed cattle. You look across Europe, you look across the US of A, it's all corn-fed cattle. We have quality product here that we should be selling out to the market and putting a strong face and a strong message on that. I welcome the half a million that's been allocated to Board B. I think more has to be done on that. I also must stress the fact that we're opening up markets here at the moment, but let's acknowledge what has been done in the past, and particularly highlight the Irish Dairy Board, where they branded butter, Irish butter, as Kerry Gold. Maybe we should look at that with regard to the beef. Pull the meat factories together, pull Borbia together, get Irish beef as a specific brand so the world recognises it. It's a grass-fed, be grass based animal that's quality produced. It's what the world needs. It's quality product out there. And that is the message we should be sending instead of having to stand here and listen to the bickering from across from Finnafal with no positive outcomes at all. They would rather have Irish agriculture out of Europe based on what's been going on within their party in the last couple of days. So Minister, it's important that we market the quality Irish fed, grass fed beef properly. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy, Deputy Pat Deary. Three minutes. Uh, thank you, Lascar. I'm delighted to have the opportunity to say a few words here tonight. It's particularly important. It's not that often we get an opportunity to speak on agricultural matters in this particular area. So it's important that you know they, they point out the importance agriculture plays in this economy. Uh, for the first time in many, many years, uh, it is very important that agriculture is, is, is outlined. In years gone by, under under the Fall the administration, agriculture wasn't treated with any respect whatsoever. And yet, what, for the first time, agriculture is no more important than bricks and mortar. I think that's very important. At the outside, it's important to point out that, that um, beef farmers in particular have gone through a very difficult spring uh, and early winter this particular year. Um, we have seen uh, prices collapse in the industry, uh, basically on the, on the point that, that uh, prices uh, were artificially high last year. An unreal expectation was created with the prices that were there. If we look back at the figures over the past number of years, uh, we, as has been pointed out here on by the Minister, uh, the average figure was 379 uh, per kilo. Uh, we're, we're at this page, we're at 367. At its height last year, we were at 443. That was the unreal figure, an unreal expectation was created at that particular point. Uh, we need to put proper structures in place uh, to ensure what we have at the moment doesn't happen again. You know, while acknowledging there's a problem there, there is no quick fix solution. There never has been a quick fix solution to any particular problems. As my colleague Deputy Dye mentioned earlier on, three, four years ago we had an issue in the dairy industry. And I'm too well aware of that myself as a dairy farmer in Carlo. The difficulty was there. There was nobody coming to bail me out three or four years ago when I was getting 20 cents a litre for milk. I had to grin and bear it and get on with it. So we have difficulties at the moment. We've got to ensure that difficulties are there, don't arise in the future. We've got to put proper structures in place to ensure that there is stability going forward. And in order to do that, I think we were ahead of the pots in that regard, you know well that you keep in our own committee, uh, bringing forward the different people that were involved. The entire stakeholders were involved in the committee, uh, 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 be it the producers, be it the, the factory people, be it targets, all those. We, we bought those on board to ensure that we had the, round table, the, the first part of the round table discussion, which has been rubbish by people over in the opposition. But round, round table discussion, getting people together is the only way this is going to be sorted. There were proper structures in place to make sure that we have a stability going forward. And as a result of those round table discussions, we've had 
uh, the Dowling report, which has been key, in my opinion, which will be key uh, to ensure that we have stability for the future. And those recommendations uh, that have been published need to be implemented uh, as soon as possible to ensure that we have uh, a proper structure going forward. Uh, it is also ironic that we are discussing this issue here tonight uh, when the Minister is, uh, is in America trying to get alternative markets. And one of the solutions to this issue is having alternative markets, uh, supply and demand as we all know. Alternative markets and more and more of them is essential. So I think it's important that, that the Minister goes abroad or goes wherever the markets are to try and make sure that they are viable for the future. It's also important, and it must be pointed out as well, that under the capital negotiations last year, uh, we got a good deal of agriculture in this country, despite the fact that you might disagree with that. And it's also ironic that the, the main beef producing farmers are, are, are the productive farmers in uh, the southeast part of the country, as Deputy, your own Deputy Brown mentioned earlier on. Thank and they're the same farmers, Deputy, uh, that you wanted to reduce their, their, their single farm payment to a maximum of €400 Euro per hectare. That's what you wanted to do. Thank you, so they're the productive the farmers. They're the productive farmers who are producing the beef uh, to go to the factories, yeah. to go to the supermarket, and you wanted to reduce their payments to €400 Euro per hectare. Okay, that's uh, Thank you. But at the same Sorry, time, Deputy, we had the battle to make sure that we got €700 Euro per hectare. Next speaker. So it just to conclude, to conclude sorry, sorry, yeah, over time. I think it's essential. I think it's essential that all the stakeholders come together and to come to a solution, as I've mentioned earlier on, their own table discussions, put the structures in place to make sure that what is possible, these issues that are there at the moment, don't happen again. Come here, Margaret. Uh, now call Deputy Martin Ferris. You are sharing time, Deputy? No. Yeah. no thank you. Okay. Uh, Good morning, I see in the Farmers' Journal last week uh, that Minister Coveney is saying that he's acutely aware of the problems facing the Irish beef sector. Acutely aware. Great word. To be honest, I think there is a lot of people in this society here and now who are well fed up of hearing members of Fine Gael and Labour Coalition telling us that they are acutely aware of our plight. Acutely aware doesn't cut it when what we need is action. There are times when the Minister on those benches over there are merely telling us that it's hurting them more than it's hurting us. That is hurting them more than it is hurting the farming community. Well, that won't wash with Irish farmers anymore. It won't wash with the beef farmers, particularly. Twice last week, we had farmers at the door here protesting. They were angry, and to be honest, I'm angry on their behalf. In my lifetime, I have never seen two uh, mobilizations here in the one week by the IFA. And that in itself tells all of us that there's a crisis in the beef sector and it needs to be sorted out. The big retail multiples are reducing their prices, while their own profit margins are growing at the expense of the farmer, the producer. Figures show that in 2013, the farmer received 57% of the average price of beef on the British retail market. The retail price per kilo has risen by 7%, but the farmer's share has dropped to 42%. And that is some whack to take. I repeat it, the farm brigade prices for Irish cattle has fallen by 15%, while the price of beef on the shelves of the British supermarket is up 7%. Beef farmers have lost income to the extent that they are in crisis. They have also lost confidence in the minister, who on Malling Island last week publicly washed his hands of the crisis and said on the air that it was the market and that he could do nothing about it. He blames it on the market. We know that this government looks to the rich and powerful and ignore, ignores the plight of the more vulnerable. But this one takes the biscuit. Is Simon Coveney so divorced from reality of the Irish beef farmers' lives that he does not know what is happening in the industry? In response to this crisis, he set up a talking shop, they call it a round table, where the beef factories' representatives can talk to each other and tell us that we're all doing fine. I want to see the beef farm balance before the Oireachtas Committee on Agriculture. We spoke about it this week, and we want to see them brought in before the Agricultural Committee. I want to see those powerful individuals who control this industry, and not their press, or their publicity executives, their PR men, or their image consultants. I want to see the beef farms themselves, individually, before our committee, to account for their actions. This industry is too important for the government to take a back seat and let these people run it and ruin the life, livelihoods of beef farmers and their families. Farmers who were encouraged by Chagas to rear bull beef found their prices collapsed and their sheds full of cattle they could not sell, and they are not impressed by this. 
The minister has sat on his hands and allowed the beef barons to call the shots and manipulate the market to the extent that some farmers have been pushed over the edge. There is an individual, a beef baron out there, that's known to every single one in this house, and his name comes up decade after decade, not year after year. And he was a leading, playing a leading role in the beef industry in this state, who is, it seems is allowed to do what he likes to manipulate that market, and he continues to do it. He is allowed to own and control a large herd of cattle at his whim. He can flood the market and collapse the prices, which he does. He is not alone on this. He has his allies scattered around the country. And when he wants to, and when they call the shots to bring the prices down, the farmer that's on the cattle job or that's bringing the cattle to, the, to his, his factories, they are, set, they are giving a price that is probably 5% below what they expect. They take a decision, well, we won't, we won't uh, send our cattle in. But what he does is lift the phone, and his people from around the country make sure that he has a supply of cattle at the market price, making it almost impossible for the, the farmer who is dependent to meet his overheads, meet his maybe repayments or whatever. He has to get rid of his cattle at, the, at that man's price and at other men's prices and, uh, who control this industry. And nothing is being done about it. This is continuing year in, year out. When they want to, they can manipulate the market to collapse the prices. And last week, out here, when there was pickets going on out here and, and, and the mobilization of members of the IFA, what happened this week? Cut five cents again. So this is what they can do. They're all powerful. This cartel, sitting, who have their, their representatives sitting around the old table, who came in here with their representatives and done absolutely nothing but stonewall the whole, the whole meetings inside here in the committee. They are getting away with murder because they are allowed to be getting away with it. Any minister worth his salt would move to control this type of behaviour. But this government looks after the likes of him and the small man can go to the hill or go to the wall. The factories have abused their power and they continue to abuse their power. They have changed specifications at will, so they have driven down prices at will by penalising farmers, by penalising people who are struggling to put bread on the table. Farmers are tempted to abandon cattle at, at, at March currently. The prices being offered are so low. They are not making ends meet. They are producing at a loss. And the reason they are producing at a loss is because these beef barons out there are able to manipulate the market to suit their agenda, and they continue to do that. I raised it here in the chamber last week that many farmers suspect that the beef barons run the industry by this type of manipulation and by having access, crucially, to the AIMS database. I know the minister denied it here. Last week he denied it. Last week you were here, um, Minister Hayes, and he wasn't here. He didn't turn up to answer the questions, but sent along you to do answer the questions for him about the data management and transparency within the beef industry. And in fairness, you did your best to answer it. And in an inevitable position, trying to answer something that everyone knows that they have access to. Yes, they have access to That's how they're able to manipulate the market along with flooding the market when it suits them. It is widely believed that the beef factories have access to this database and that farm financial data as well. While farmers are not given access to figures collected by the department and the number of cattle slaughtered each week or the level, crucially the level, of inter-trading among, among meat factories. Unless the factory managers are clairvoyant, how do they know when finished cattle are coming on steam? You can't sit there and tell me in absolute terms that they haven't got access. You can't do it. No, you can't, because you don't know who's within your department could be leaking it to them. You don't know. Yes, but it's happening. There's been bought. It's happening. And nothing has been done about it. Deputy Ferris has the floor, please. We can see that the representatives from the beef factories that turn up to the round table circus are always vague and invasive on this answer. No one is prepared to say what is the situation with slaughter cattle. This talking shop is going over because it's not getting to the bottom of what is happening here. Manipulation of the market by the beef barons, access, suspicion of access to the database, knowing when cattle come on base so that they can determine the price and they can bring, get the cattle at their, wishes, their wish price. Will the so-called new transparency and promises include the figures for the number of cattle slaughtered and the inter-trading between the factories? Is it proving it? Is there any evidence coming out of these wrong table talks to prove that or to deal with that? We have the same old excuses that this is commercially sensitive. 
Commercially sensitive for who? Commercially sensitive for the profits that the beef farms are making and continue to make at the expense of the farmer that is producing. Commercially sensitive is what this government is, is protecting and backing up as against the rights and entitlements of the farmer, the producer. We hear the same old excuses all the time. Information that the beef factories won't allow it to be published. All powerful beef factories, we won't allow this to be published. Well, the minister would want to take, as, take a stand on behalf of the farmers and would not allow the factories to call all the shots because that's what they are doing, Minister. They are calling all the shots at the expense of the farmers right around this country. We need a beef regulator to oversee how this industry is operating because, above all, it is not fair. It is anything but fair. There should be transparency and equal opportunity to producers, the farmers who produce the cattle. This is not a question of market forces. It is a question of unfair advantage to the factories, where they have the figures and the farmers do not. The traditional trade with the north, where cattle dealers come down to the south to buy cattle, has collapsed too. It's known as normatic cattle at the moment. Labelling issues have been used as a pretext to create barriers to this trade. The Sinn Féin Minister in the North, Michelle O'Neill, is happy to go to the EU looking for a derogation on the issue of labelling. Happy to go for a, der a derogation. The Sinn Féin Minister for Agriculture has met with representatives from the farming groups, including the IFA, to listen to the concerns of the farmers. She is concerned about current beef prices. We all are, all of us here are. And has planned to meet representatives from processors and retailers over the next couple of weeks to discuss the specifications which have recently been implemented. Michelle O'Neill is very concerned about the current labelling situation, which has negatively impacted on the cross-border trade of cattle. She has raised it with, with uh, Minister Simon Courtney, and I understand, and, and, and you, Minister Hayes, uh, and is now on a number of occasions wants, to he, wants your agreement to seek a derogation from Europe due to the anomaly of, the, uh, of, uh, of, of what's happening at, the, at this point in time. We want a single Ireland produce label, which won't threaten traceability standards and can be achieved so this can be fixed. But we can fix it. If the will is there, we can fix it. This, the situation as well, Minister, regarding this four, four owners, that is another serious problem. Four owners plus, right? So what is happening here? Who has been penalised at the end of that? It is again the, the producer, the person that, that, that is selling the cattle is being, is being penalised for it. And what happens to the cattle when they go onto the chain? And they go through the arbiters on the chain. What happens to them? Is that, is that if there are over four owners, is the cattle being, is the, the produce being sold cheaper? Is it? Sorry, deputy, to the chair. Uh, no, the answer is no. It's no. You don't know. The answer is no. It means that if I'm penalised because I, I'm the fifth owner or the, fourth, or the sixth owner of the cattle, I take my cattle to the to the to, to the factory. It goes up on chain. I'm penalised because there's more than four owners. It goes into the food chain, all along. There is no difference in the price. The person that goes in the retail, the, 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 the customer that goes into buys, pays the exact same price for it. So that's what's happening. And what is that? Is that not fraudulent? I had a man on to me this evening, a, 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 a man who buys a lot of cattle around the country, rang me this evening. He told me, and he, he, he stressed it, he said, I brought cattle to the, the last number of weeks, I brought cattle to the factories. I didn't even ask for a price. What does that tell you? Why? He, he couldn't even ask for a price. He is broken. He is broken by the way they have manipulated the market for their selfish the benefit. The way they have manipulated the market to get every ounce of blood off of the producer. And that is what is happening. And it's happening on your watch. It's happening, it's happening, happening for years. Nobody's done anything about it. So something has to be done about it. And it's up to you, the government, to put something in place so we have a transparency, so we know. So, yeah. yes. Put a regulator. Yeah. Regulate it for a start. If you're not going to regulate it, you allow these people to do what they want and they continue to do what they want. They're not interested in what is good for the Irish producer or for the farmer. They are interested in what they put into their own pocket and for their shareholders. They don't give a goddamn about the producer. They never have. But they continue to get away with it. It's time that this government grew a pair of bobs. It's time you stood up to them. It's time you took them on and said enough is enough. You know, I know, everybody in this house knows who is the main person out there. Every two, one of you know him. Two minutes, sir. He's got away, got away with it for years. And he's continuing to get away with it. And he's one of the main people that's manipulating the market. And 
Plus, there's nothing being done about it. So we need to, st to do something to give, protect these people so they can continue to, uh, continue to put, have a livelihood, continue to live in rural Ireland, continue to have an income, continue to have a, continue to have a viable income. But you will not do it by a round table talk, a circus, where they send in their representatives, their PR people, where they put their spin on it, the very same as they've done here in the committee, and we want them in individually, and definitely Andrew Dyle, the chairperson, a very good chairperson, I, I, I want to say as well, is prepared to try and get him in individually. And that's what we want. We want to sit across the table, look at them into their eyes, and challenge them, and make them, make them justify what they are doing. Come on. And I'm Michael Healy Reyes. Why no, Minister? Um, <coughs> at the outset, I'd like to thank the technical group for allowing me some of their speaking time. I want to compliment um, Deputy Eamon O'Keefe and the Fianna Fáil party for bringing this motion, this excellent motion, before the Dáil tonight. And um, my closest personal friend for many, many years, Mr. Bernard Collins, who has worked in the Tralee Act for over 35 years, has warned me for a very long time about what is happening in the beef sector. And we all know that the present Minister for Agriculture is for the road and more looked him. He's for promotion or whatever you want to call it. And, um, and I wish him good luck with that. But for the time being, he can't take his eye off the ball and he has to concentrate on the job at hand. Round table talks, my eye. That's going to get the Irish farmer nowhere. That's going to get the producers of beef nowhere. Independent regulation to create fairness in the price of, that the factories are offering is not necessary, it's vital. I want to compliment uh, Deputy Martin Ferris for his excellent contribution. Talking about cartels, talking about what has happened over the years where the producer of beef has been ground into the ground. And, and Minister, and you know what my own personal opinion of yourself is, Minister. I'm very, uh, we're, we're great friends, and I wish you every good look. But, but you do know that any day of the week, Minister, it costs 7,800 euros to keep a cow for 12 months. And you know that. You're a sensible, practical man. And if it costs you 7 or 800 euros to keep a cow for 12 months, you can't make money producing beef at that type of cost if you take what you're being paid at the factories at the moment. It is a disgrace what is going on in this country. And you know, to be honest with you, we had tribunals and we had investigations before, but what is happening now, I would actually say it is criminal, because I'd ask you a question, Minister, and you're a very sincere Minister, and I'd ask you a straight question. What young little boy or girl at the moment would want to take up farming? And when I see farmers above in Tipperary and in Meath, and when I see them give up and saying they don't want to produce anymore, where is a farmer in the Black Valley or in Glencar or in the areas that I represent? Where are they going? If the people in Meath and in Kildare want to give up, it just, it just, it does not make financial sense. So. I heard you earlier on, Minister, I, I'm sorry I wasn't here, but I was listening to every word that you were saying. And you know what you did, Minister? You sold yourself short, because you, you were sort of saying to the people bringing forward the motion, you were saying, oh, look, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to intervene, and do you want me to, to uh, sort of intervene in prices? I'd say this to you, Minister, you're selling yourself short. There are two ministers for agriculture in this country, and you're one of them. You're very influential people. And you should use your position, and I mean this in a respectful way, to throw your weight around and to put it up to the people that are organizing the cartels and to put it up to the people who are flying around in helicopters while the producer of beef is struggling to fill his jeep with diesel. It just doesn't make sense. It's not fair. It's not right. And you're a fair-minded man, and I know that and I appreciate it. And I'd ask you, if the senior minister is falling asleep at the wheel, it is not our job to throw him out of the car. It's our job to wake him up. And that's what Fianna Fáil and Eamon O'Keefe are doing here tonight. And they're right to do it. The grid should be the grid. And if it's there when cattle prices are good, it should be there when cattle prices are bad. Our county chairman, Sean Brasnan, the chairman of the Kerry IFA, 
is an excellent organizer and mobilizer of farmers and he is deeply and acutely aware of what is happening at present in County Kerry and around the rest of the country, as am I. And my closest personal friends, myself included, every person is losing money because there is just not money in producing a calf, fattening the calf, making the calf into beef and selling it at the factory it just doesn't work. The sums don't add up. And I'd look on you, and I'd look on your, your senior minister, and I'd say to you, for God's sake, what are you doing? And don't mind this round the table rubbish, talking rubbish, the targets for 2020 are rubbish because it, they won't be met, because it's impossible if you're killing off the producer of beef, if you're killing off the producer of beef, and if he won't make money, the whole thing will grind to a stop. And we're, I'm saying this, and you know I'm saying this in the most genuine and sincere way, and when I'm standing up here tonight, I hope that I'm talking for the farmers of Ireland who are producing beef and who are losing money and who are working damn hard. And you, you know that too, Minister. Thank you. And they're working great. all hours of the day and night, and their families are under, under strain and pressure. They're trying to educate their children. They're trying to better themselves, and they're just trying to keep going, and they're not making money. And we have fellas flying around in helicopters up in the sky, peeing down Thank and down. Deputy, could, and I could, do. could I ask you, Deputy, to move that the yeah, debate yeah. be adjourned? I, I move that the debate be adjourned.